Hello there, how are ya? How is your mama? Thanks so much for stopping by. Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. I'm going to be sharing with you my three favorite foundations from the drugstore. One of these I've used for well over a year now. The other two are kind of favorites that happened this year, but ever since incorporating them into my routine, they've been some of my go-tos, even more so than some of my high-end foundations. So I thought it would be fun to just sit down and give you a demo of each. Just for a quick reference, I have normal to dry skin, but I do tend to get a little bit oily in the T-zone, which tends to be the case for a lot of us. If not, consider yourself lucky and blessed. For the most part, I do go in with the same primer combination for all three. And I did use like kind of mid-range to high-range primer but if you don't have these in your collection already, use something that's similar or works for you. I always encourage you to use something in your collection. Don't feel like you have to have these primers. There's plenty of great primer options at the drugstore. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the demos of each of these foundations. Okay, so as you can see, my hair is insane. I am still in my jammies, but honestly, this is my favorite way to film. The primer combo that I'm wearing today, this is from Becca. I always wanna say Backlight. That's one of my favorite ones, kind of the champagne toned one. But this one is the First Light Priming Filter. I really like this on days that my skin just looks a little bit just kind of tired and dull. I find that the lavender tone really helps to brighten up my skin. It doesn't really do anything for my pores. It just kind of moisturizes and it creates a more even brighter base, which I really like without any actual like dew or shine. And just on my nose, just because lately it has been a little bit greasier there, it cosmetics, your skin, but better primer and oil-free makeup gripping, pore refiner and hydrator, all day grip technology, basically the longest name to ever exist. So to apply the foundation pretty much with any foundation, unless it's something that's so runny that it soaks it up. I like to go in with the Sonia Kashuk sponge. That is my favorite sponge of life. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. I'm currently using this shade Soft Sand M2. It comes in 15 shades. I'm not quite sure if they are phasing this out of Ulta or what. I really hope not, but it looks like that's the case. There's only five shades on there right now, and it's the medium to deep range. You can find all 15 shades at flowerbeauty.com, walmart.com, or if your local Walmart happens to carry Flower Beauty. Not only is the formula amazing, I think the packaging is so nice and high-end looking. It is a glass bottle. You get a pump. I'm going to go ahead and start off with two pumps. It has more of a gel texture. It's not super thick. It's not whipped. It's not runny. On your skin, it feels completely weightless. I think that's my absolute favorite part of it. I will say though, I've noticed that a lot of the shades tend to look more on the yellow side. So if you are really, really fair, I don't know how this foundation will wear on you because not only does it run a little yellow, but I've noticed it does oxidize just the tiniest bit. So whenever I'm like at my pastiest of paste, I can't wear this shade. It ends up pulling a little bit too deep on me, but right now just with a little bit of self tanner. It is my perfect color. You can definitely go in and apply it all over the face and it wouldn't set like you have time to blend it out. I just kind of like to work in sections like this. With this first layer, I would say you have a nice true medium coverage. Find that it just covers up any redness or uneven skin tone, but it still allows your freckles to peek through. It's dewy, but it doesn't feel greasy on the face at all. But if you're someone who really tries to conceal, like if you have really oily skin and you're trying to conceal any shine, I don't really think you would like this because it does have a very nice luminous finish on its own. I thought I would go ahead and just do one side of my face first. That way you guys could really see side by side the coverage. I do find it to be very long wearing. This time of the year, I really don't set it except for like right here on the lower portion of my jaw, just from like having the phone near my face or my hand, I just noticed that makeup tends to get eaten up right there. So here is the side with foundation. It just doesn't look makeup-y or cakey. It's very skin-like, but with a good medium coverage. And then here is the side with nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply some right here onto my freckles, just so you can see the coverage. Now, I don't mind my freckles peeking through just because I feel like that just looks more skin-like, especially if you know me, if my freckles suddenly disappear, the whoa, cake face you have on too much makeup. But it just does such a good job of covering redness, uneven skin tone, like I have a dark spot right there. It covers up those things, but then still letting like the natural elements like freckles peek through. Honestly, I feel like it wears just like a high-end foundation. I think that's why I love it so much. I have been out of like my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, and then, what is it? My It Cosmetics CC Plus Illumination, 
which I love that so much. I get the same, not necessarily the same coverage, but the same sort of finish that I like out of those two foundations out of this one. And the price tag of this one is much more reasonable. Here is a look of the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation once I have the rest of my makeup on. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't set the rest of my face just right here on the lower portions where my face tends to eat the makeup. And then I did set my concealer as well. If you are curious, I just went in with the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I've been loving that concealer lately. But everywhere else on my face, it was just powder products, a powder highlighter, blush, and bronzer. I'll go ahead and link those products down below under each foundation. Also, if you are curious of the eye look that I'm wearing, I talked all about it in my October favorites, which I will have an eye up above for y'all. So my overall thoughts for this foundation, that sounds like it's a first impressions. No, I've been using this foundation for like well over a year now. The general overview of this foundation, I guess, if you have normal to dry skin and you love a luminous finish, I think you will absolutely love this foundation. I would say the only downside of this foundation, and this is also really dependent on where you live, I live in Houston. It gets very hot, humid, swampy, and muggy during the summer. Whenever you throw humidity into that mix, things get a little bit messy. So unfortunately during the summer months, it's not quite as long wearing. Now I could always go in and apply a mattifying foundation underneath and it probably would last longer, but then it kind of takes away the luminosity that this formula gives. I still wear it just because I love the overall finish. Honestly, it wears just like a high-end foundation. If you like those other two foundations that I mentioned earlier, the It Cosmetics CC Plus Illumination or the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, I really do think you would like this just because you get such a weightless finish. It still looks like skin. It's glowy without being greasy or heavy or slippery. It's just such a comfortable formula. The price tag is great. The only thing is the shade range could definitely be expanded a bit, especially since so many of them do pull so yellow. But overall, I just, it's such a doozy. That's the best way to describe it. So there you have it. There is my first drugstore foundation. Let's go ahead and move on to the next. Here we are with day two of sharing my favorite drugstore foundations. If you're wondering what's on my face right now, I am just going in with the Becca First Light Primer. I think I'm just going to stick with the same primer combo for every single foundation, just because these aren't ones that really like manipulate the overall formula of the foundation. Like they're not pore blurring or anything like that. They're just kind of brightening and moisturizing. Now I will say for the foundation that I'm sharing today, which is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear, this dries down to more of a like natural matte finish. So if you're like me and you really like more of a dewy luminous finish, a great combo is going in with one of the L'Oreal Lumi Glotions. There's I think either three or four different shades. I go in with a medium and I'll normally go in and just mix a little bit of that just to create a little bit more of a glowy base. But I just wanna show you the true finish of of the foundation, so that's why I just went in with a typical brightening primer. Okay, so the shade that I'm using today is 480. I probably could go in with one deeper just because my neck and my chest are tanner than what's coming off on camera, but I think once I go in and bronze, we can make it work. This foundation comes in 40 different shades. I believe when it first launched, there were 30 shades. It retails anywhere from 12 to $15, depending where you purchase it. Typically, Walmart and Target tend to be the cheapest. It does have a pump, it has a glass bottle, it does come with the red lid on top. Now, the main reason that I wanted to share this, not only because I truly do love it, but I feel like the L'Oreal, why can't I even think of, oh, L'Oreal Lumi, the True Match Lumi foundation. That used to be one of my all time favorite foundations from the drugstore. I do think I like the Flower Beauty Light Illusion a little bit more, so that's why I shared that one. But when it comes to the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear, more than anything, I think this is a formula that would be suitable for all different skin types, whether you're dry, oily, or just normal. You can really kind of manipulate the formula just because it is a very liquidy, texture. Whenever you go in and try to like mix and match and create like your own concoction, sometimes it can kind of change the formula a bit. But since this one is so runny, I feel like you can really go in and add the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion, or if you just wanted to go in with like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, both of those, you can kind of get that same effect where it just adds a little bit more of a dewy finish to the formula or you could just wear it as is and get more of a matte finish. Not only is the formula very comfortable on the face, just like the Flower Beauty Light Illusion, it's very lightweight, just feels completely weightless, but with it having that matte finish, typically with matte foundations, you kind of get like a drier, at least for me, it almost feels like it dries and tugs on the face. For instance, the Revlon Colorstay, while that formula is very long wearing, it feels like makeup on the skin. 
with the L'Oreal, I keep wanting to say Lumi, with the L'Oreal Infallible one, since it is so thin and liquidy, it just blends right into the skin and go in and build up a second layer if you wanted full coverage. But even with one layer, you get a pretty high medium coverage. It goes in and it covers any uneven skin tone. It covers up redness, but it still lets freckles peek through. So you get a very nice flawless coverage, but it still maintains this really nice skin-like quality. This isn't a formula that oxidizes. I have two different shades in this. I've worn both and I've never experienced it like slowly darkening or anything on the face. So whichever shade that you pick, it stays pretty true on the skin. Do you see what I mean about that natural matte finish? Typically with matte foundations, they tend to be a little bit more like dry and chalky looking on the skin to where they cling onto everything. I didn't go in with any sort of pore blurring primer if I did, I'd probably have even more of like a flawless smoothing finish right here, especially right here, that like open pore that never wants to shut. But it just sits very nicely on the skin. Even during the summer months with the humidity, this is a foundation that has great longevity. So if you happen to live in Houston or anywhere else, that is very humid and muggy and swampy during the summer. This foundation lasts through it all. I don't really find the need to go in and set it even during the summer months just because it does dry down to that nice natural matte finish. So not only does this foundation come in 40 shades, but just like pretty much every other foundation in the L'Oreal line, they do a really good job of having like cool tones, neutral tones, and warm tones. So I feel like you could definitely go in and find your shade in this range. Here's a look at the Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear after applying everything else on top. I didn't go in and I didn't set it with powder, but I do have powder bronzer on. I just went in with NARS Laguna and some powder blush. Just like earlier, I'll go ahead and link whatever other products I have on my face down below. Everything does apply great on top. I don't have any issues whenever I go in with concealer and blend it out. Nothing like pulls or tugs away. I do have a tiny bit of translucent powder right on my under eyes on top of the concealer. I think if you are someone who has long work hours or if you have like family photos coming up or a wedding and you're on a budget, this would be a great foundation. Even if you're someone who's not balling on a budget, you got plenty of money to spend on foundation, but you're just looking for something that's long wearing, comfortable, weightless on the skin, has a pretty wide shade range. I think you would be very happy with the infallible 24 hour fresh wear. I feel like I've said that name over and over again. As I mentioned earlier, I just want to really like instill this into your head. Even if you're someone who doesn't like a matte foundation, because that is totally me. There's still days where you're just looking for something that's a little bit more like full coverage and glam. I think you would really like this because you can always go in with a L'Oreal Lumi Glotion or any sort of illuminating primer and still get that nice dewy finish just because the viscosity of it is so thin. It's e really easy to go in and just like kind of manipulate the formula. It's just overall a great foundation and that's why it's in this video. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Now, I know with the other two, I said that I was staying with the same two primers, but I changed it up a little bit today just because this is a foundation where I noticed on some days it can settle into the pores right here. So I just went in with a little bit of the e.l.f. Poreless Primer Putty. Whatever type of pore blurring primer you have will do. I just really like the texture of this one. Now there is another kick to this foundation. This is all personal preference though, because I have seen people rave about this foundation without the step that I'm going to do, but it's a game changer for me. Originally when I wore it on its own, I didn't like it as much. So if you've been keeping up with my channel, then from those little context clues, you probably already know. I'm talking about the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation Stick. I'm currently using the shade Classic Beige 860A. If you shop this at Ulta or Target, there's about 16 shades available, but if you shop it directly from the Wet n Wild Beauty site, there are 21 shades. It retails anywhere from like five to $7, depending where you buy it. I've heard that it's a dupe of the Hourglass Stick Foundation. I've personally never tried that one, so I can't say. It took me forever to try this foundation just because with most stick foundations, they're usually more on like the dry side. They kind of tug on the skin. They're not as like moisturizing. I know I'm touching my hair. You hate me. I'm sorry. You're just going to have to deal with it right now. But I had used the Makeup Forever stick foundation before they reformulated it. And I absolutely love that. Just for the price point, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. Before I just slather this all over my face, I like to go in with some sort of moisturizing mist underneath. I just find that it spreads a lot better. It spreads nicely on its own, but something about this combination is 
heavenly. I don't want you to feel pressured by any means to go out and get the Pixie Glow Mist. I have tried it with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Primer setting mist before too, and I did really like that. Just not quite as much, but both work, or you could completely skip this step. This is just something that I really like to do. It is getting so hot in here, so this feels so good right now. So I go in and I just do a generous misting. I basically bathe my face. Also, yes, if you're wondering, that is a self-tanner stain. And then I'm just gonna go in and basically color my face. So as you can see, it just glides right on. This formula is infused with both argan oil and sunflower oil, so it's very moisturizing on the skin. If you have really oily skin, I don't think this will be the longest wearing on you. I think you'll like it at first, but I feel like halfway throughout the day, you probably would have to touch up. But if you have more of a normal to dry skin type, I think you would absolutely love this foundation. Also, yes, I do prefer a brush with this foundation, which is weird. If I'm going for a day where I don't really have any eye makeup on, but I just wanna do a quick little layer of foundation, I'll go in and use this with the Sonia Kashuk sponge. But on days where I do want a little bit more coverage, I just find a dense foundation brush just works beautifully with this foundation. So with one layer, you have a very nice, it says it's marketed as semi-matte. I definitely think it's more of like a natural, just natural finish. It's not super satin, it's not matte. It's just a very like, there's a very light glow to it. That is one layer. Typically with this foundation, I do like to go in with two. But let me go ahead and do the other side of my face. See at this point, that primer mist or glow mist is already all absorbed. So there's no like wet base on my skin but it still just glides right on. If you have very dry skin, you could leave this foundation as is and not go in and set it. I like to set my nose, my smile lines, and my chin. I'll leave my forehead and my cheeks, and then you know I'll just go in with like powder blush or powder bronzer, and I don't notice that it like gets sticky or tacky. Like I can still go in and easily blend my bronzer without it catching or anything. But if you have really oily skin, you'll definitely want to set this one. It's still a very lightweight foundation, but I will say I do feel it on my skin a little bit more than the L'Oreal Infallible one, just the foundation that we wore previously, or that I wore previously, just because that one is so, so thin. That one really does feel completely weightless. This doesn't feel heavy by any means. Like when I smile, I'm not feeling it like tugging and moving on my face, but it just does have a little bit more of a weight to it compared to the last foundation. I love this one so much, especially on more natural makeup days. Like I said, on days where I just have like brows, mascara, and I just feel like I want a little bit of coverage, I'll just do like single strokes on my cheeks, my chin, and my nose, go in with the sponge, and it's just enough to where there's still a little bit of like imperfections peeking through with the sponge, but my skin overall looks healthier, it looks much more even. So freckles are still definitely peeking through, but redness is concealed. You can still see some of the darkness on my under eyes. I feel like with the L'Oreal Infallible, like everything was blanked out. That was definitely a way more full coverage foundation. But if you are an everyday natural finish, natural coverage type of gal or boy, I think you'd really enjoy this one. Here is the look of the Wet n Wild Stick Foundation after about three or four hours now. I totally forgot to come back in and check in to show you how it looks after I apply the rest of my bronzer and my blush. This is one of those foundations that I actually feel like gets prettier the longer that I wear it. While I like the initial application, after by like hour three or four, something about it, I feel like it just melts in with my skin and it just has this gorgeous finish. I love this. This formula so much. Just like the other two, it's something that's comfortable on the skin. That's the biggest thing for me. If I can feel the foundation on my face, it's a no-go. Like by 30 minutes after I've applied it, I'm just wanting to wipe it off or wash my face. Something feels greasy or grimy or heavy, I just can't take it. So all three of these are very weightless and comfortable on the skin. So I would probably say that the Wet n Wild Stick Foundation is the lightest while it's still a medium coverage. It's like a true medium. Then the Flower Beauty is a buildable medium. And then of course the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear. That is high medium to full coverage. That's about as full as I go. So there are the three foundations from the drugstores that I have been absolutely in love with lately. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Let me know if you would like to see a high-end version of this same format of video. I realized that I didn't do check-ins, but honestly, 
the reason that these three were in here is because they are some of the longer wearing ones for my skin type. So I don't have issues of them slipping and sliding all over the face. If I did have issues during the summer months, it's something that I mentioned during each little mini review. But thanks so much for hanging out. If you haven't already, I would love if you subscribed and I will see ya in the next one. Bye y'all.